Okay, go, go, go. Okay, how's this thing start? Here's a fun new experiment for you guys, and I hope that you can hear my voice super clearly because I have a professional microphone. This is something that you can do with alakashas and kalakashas. I've done this a ton of times, and through trial and error, I figured out the best way to do it. So, if you stick around for the end of the video, I'm going to give you my best piece of advice for overwintering alakashas and kalakashas. I'm going to tell you how I turned five plants that you'll see in a second, into 17 plants. So we're gonna be cutting the elephant ear bulbs and propagating them by actually cutting the bulbs. So if you've never seen me before, I'm Kelly. I'm a Purdue University Master Gardener. I am a plant nerd. And what else am I? Oh, I'm also the owner of Plant Nerd Experiments, which is where we make wild planters and uh, plant accessories out of recycled scrap metal. Yes, yes, we get it. These are the alakashas laying on my front porch. This part of the video was shot in March of this year, so five months ago, and the results, yes, the results, come from August. These are dark star alakashas that have black stems and black veining underneath. You'll wanna make sure that you have these nodes and or buds, one on each cut that you take from the bulb. Now you're going to want to give it a haircut, so cut some roots just so you can see your buds and where you're going to want to make your cuts. And there's a bud right there. Make sure you have a sharp knife. Of course it needs to be clean. It's very satisfying. And there's a bud as well. Make two inch slices as long as you have a bud. Continue with one to two inch slices all the way up until you reach the top of the root rhizome. One thing to keep in mind as you're handling the alakashas is that the goop, yes I said goop, G-O-O-P, that comes out of the rhizomes and out of the stem. It contains oxalate crystals, which a lot of people, if you have sensitive skin, you might have a reaction to it, especially if you have a reaction to, say, Virginia creeper. So just make sure that you're checking for those buds and, you know, giving those roots a good haircut. Results! The results are in! It worked! Oh, we kind of already knew that. Here's the most important thing when it comes to the bottom of the corm bulb rhizome it has to go into inert material. So it needs to be perlite, vermiculite, uh, play sand, horticultural sand, crushed stone, something that is inorganic that is going to be far less susceptible to harboring bacteria, viruses, fungi, etc. Tried this a million different ways, all the different ways, and this is the way to go. It's almost 100% uh, perfect. Make sure that you cover the top of the rhizomes uh, with, I do like a thin layer of perlite on the top, uh, especially if they're gonna be in the sun, um, which they should be outside, if at all possible, to maintain humidity. So moving on. The tops of the corms are rising. They're going to need some stability because there's not enough structure underground. I used uh, bamboo to hold them up, so you'll need something like that. And then here are the results of the top. These have been in for five months. There's no need to wait five months, but here I'm trying to pull these apart, this black star. And there it goes. And you can see where I sliced off the bottom of that right there. That's the flat side. And the other part of this has a monster root ball. That entire massive part, that's root ball from one top of the alakasha. My final tip for overwintering your alakashas is to not let them go dormant. Bring them inside, wash the spider mites off, wash them once a month to keep the spider mites away, and don't try to let the bulbs go dormant. So pro tip.